freezing today as we record this. It's cold <laughs> everywhere. It's cold everywhere. So. Welcome, yes. Chuck. Welcome, Cheryl. This is everything you wanted to know about AceWeb. Chuck, very, ready to go. Very good. Well, uh, again, thanks for uh, setting us up, Lori. And again, welcome to the webinar. Uh, it is uh, February is when we're pr producing this, and there is a horrible snowstorm, and we're hoping everyone's safe. So. Um, well, we wanted to talk about the web, which of course is something you don't have to worry about weather because your students can log on to AceWeb and sign up anytime. And over the past, um, over the past, well, I guess 15 years that we've had AceWeb on, uh, we keep adding things to it, improving the program thanks to your input and feedback. But we really haven't done a general one about how to optimize or work with your AceWeb, and so we thought it was time. And so that's what we're about today. Um, again, um, we're not going to, we're not assuming that you are the web expert. I, I see some names out there who are, but again, as uh, one of the key users, most of you are key users or are involved in the process, we want you to know what you can expect your ACE web to do, and then you will get with either your tech or your webmaster or your HTML person on campus to help make it happen. Uh, and again, I did want to give a shout out Cheryl Scott, who is uh, is online with us. Cheryl, we're glad to have you. Cheryl is uh, probably our key web mistress, webmaster has done um, has done a lot of the work in making your ace web pages what they are, and we're happy to have her with us. So she's my she's my technical backup. So if you've got tech questions, shoot them on, and um, I will definitely defer those to Cheryl. All right, so uh, what are we going to do? I, I, again, the idea that to make this work, it does take a team. Uh, obviously, you as the program manager, the folks who are using Student Manager and, and involved with AceWeb, but certainly also your AceWeb tech, uh, unless you happen to also have multiple roles as a um, the technician and the ace web keeper of the flame and the student manager keeper of the flame, um, you do not probably have all the tools you need, and so you will need to have this other team uh, together uh, to help you get your upgrades in place. <clears throat> and again, I realize not everybody has an HTML person, and we'll talk about that later on as to how you might still get customizing and make sure your ace web is updated. So. That's kind of the context of this. Um, what we're going to talk about, I, I wanted to kind of review the upgrade process, um, moving parts of AceWeb, how it fits together. <clears throat> we want to talk about what's new, uh, a couple of the optional modules. I know some of you have most all of them and others don't. We'll, we'll get a quick review. And again, talk about what your part in this is. What are some things you can do? We'll, we'll actually give you a little homework in the middle of this. And then talk about our premium services, the makeover and the new fitness, AceWeb Fitness service. So uh, with that, again, as always, if you've got questions, write them in the uh, text box. Lori will cover those um, on through. I'll, I'll take a break at a couple of times and see if there are any burning questions. Otherwise, we'll try to cover them at the end of the time. So if we're ready to go, let's do it. Um, the AceWeb upgrade, and in terms of the difference between an AceWeb upgrade and a student manager upgrade is that student manager, there is only one program that you have to deal with. In student manager, it's just the new SM8. <clears throat> it's the executable that, um, it's the executable you put in and the upgrade is there. In AceWeb, you've really got three parts that all work together. Number one is, of course, the new upgraded program, which would offer the new feature or fix a bug. But the other thing is that your AceWeb pages, and this is both kind of a blessing and a curse, if you would, because even though the new program that is the AceWeb engine that runs behind the scene might be updated, if you're using old pages, or if you have a page that does not have on the page a <clears throat> feature or a snippet of web code to use the feature in Student Manager or in AceWeb, you're not taking full advantage of your system. And so that's kind of what we wanted to kind of make sure you as 
the person who's really kind of generally in charge of making sure your Aceware, which is Aceweb and Student Manager, work together and have all the parts moving in mesh, uh, you need to be aware of that. And then certainly the, the other piece is your Aceweb INI settings. Uh, your Aceweb INI system has the equivalent, and I'm going to actually get over to that here, uh, of your preferences in Student Manager. So hang on, let me clear that drawing is that within the Aceweb INI there are a whole there are over 120 different settings where you can adjust how um, how your Aceweb is going to operate so again that's the kind of thing that we want to, hang on a second I got the wrong slideshow here let me get back to the to the deck here so again that is something we'll cover in a bit we'll show you where you can review that information the other thing to note is that um, in terms of the upgrade process, uh, right now, and I don't have a slide for this, but the current version of Aceweb is 3.5. And we'll, we'll talk about how you can tell what the, most, what the most current one is. But as part of the standard Aceweb upgrade, we do not replace, update all of your Aceweb pages. So again, that is something that uh, we'll need to review and we'll show you how you can kind of tell. And of course, you're generally doing this in concert with, in cooperation with your Aceware tech. So, all right, so we're, 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 we're talking about the three different parts of an Aceweb upgrade. Um, again, if you are getting, if you have not already done your Aceweb upgrade to 3.5, one of the things we want you to do is to make sure you, your IT tech, your Aceware tech who is working with you on the upgrade, make a copy of your existing Aceweb pages. And again, that's basically to the INET pub and back. Your your tech should should know this. Your Aceware tech should know this. And if you're uh, if you've got questions, ask your Aceweb tech to tell your IT person, if they're doing it with you, what it is to back up. So that if we make an update and you had custom programming, you're going to preserve that. And the other thing is, as you get ready for an upgrade to your Aceweb, is that you or your Aceware tech needs to have administrator rights to the Aceweb server. If that server is one, perhaps on campus, that um, you don't have control over, it might be part of an IT main web server site, you've got to make sure that you either have an IT person from your campus who will be available to give those rights or that you've been assigned those rights because obviously uh, your Aceware tech will have to update and modify and replace files in order to get you the latest and the greatest. Cheryl, how am I doing so far? Have I gotten off, off, off base or are we still good? No, I think you're fine. I'm good. I haven't screwed up yet. Cheryl, sure, keep me honest. After the upgrade, and again, after you and your tech go through the, uh, the Aceweb upgrade, uh, one of the things you need to review, do is review your pages to determine which ones may be older and or if they are missing, missing any desired functionality. Um, and again, I'm going to show you in a minute how you can kind of see what is models of different uh, Aceweb use, and you'll kind of know what you're missing. Um, one of the things that um, I guess I want to do now, and I think we've got the next slide here, is to talk about the templates, uh, what they are. And in, your, in the Aceweb resources section of the website, and let me get to it here, alternate interfaces, Aceweb, here we go. In the, um, in the Aceware website, there is a, a template page where you can go in and see all the latest templates that are out there. Now, one of the things that Sh uh, Cheryl tells me is that the person page, which is person zip, I believe, is that the one, Cheryl, that has the latest and the greatest on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You can't use customer though. You got to use Aceweb. Right, and I, um, I've got, I, I timed out on that. Let me get back to Aceware.com, which would be probably better anyway to show you where I got into this. So, under customers, under your Aceweb page, 
there is an ACE Web Resources page where it gives information about ACE Web. And again, we do provide the upgrade file out there with instructions, although again, it's our advice that you schedule an ACE Web upgrade with your, with your ACE Web tech, especially if you're upgrading from an earlier version of ACE Web to 3.5. Uh, once you're on 3.5, I think, Cheryl, the upgrade file itself, uh, which is 3.5, oh, oh, there it is, already upgraded yeah, ASRED 3.5. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. I think it's a little less of, a, of an issue for you to just upgrade the, the program file. Uh, but down at the bottom, there is an individual templates area where you can, and again, these are different components of your ACE web template set. Uh, but there is a ACE web, there is an ACE web password for, and I've got it written down here, so give me a second. If I can type correctly, gazoom. And so this would show you the different pages. And so the idea would be is that you would take a look at your page in ACE web and see if the date on it is as current as the one that's out here on the website. Uh, so this is dated to 10. The person pages have been updated uh, about, what, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, now, one note is that the person page is not automatically updated with default templates that come in with the upgrade. And part of the reason, well, one of the main reasons for that is that often you will end up customizing your person page to your own campus so that, again, we don't overwrite that. Uh, but if you want to update it, you can download the person update page or have your tech, have your Aceware tech do that, and then apply the changes that you might have to your, to your person page. So again, I think you're, you're realizing that there are, <laughs> with the opportunity comes responsibility, and again, our goal in this process is to give you an upgrade that allows you to use the new features in ACE Web and not break anything or not lose any of the custom work that you've done before. And again, some of that updating uh, is going to be needed to do, but be done by your web person who would be copying those features from the old pages to the new ones. All right, uh, I'm going to keep on going. How do you know what's new in ACEWeb? Well, a couple of the things that are uh, new is the new ACEWeb paying invoices online. And I'm going to go into the demo or the sandbox and show you this in a bit. But we have had the ability to pay uh, balances due online for quite a while, I think over a couple of years now. What is new just this, um, I think, January or, or end of December, is that if you are doing company invoicing, you can make an invoice for a specific class that might be um, a payment plan where you're paying invoices once a month. And it'll only allow, or you can allow your student to come online and just pay off the invoice that is due and not having to pay off the entire balance of a course. So whether that's a, a trip or a large fee on a, on a, a you know, a program of study course, uh, a really nice option. Uh, name credentials, uh, the credential tool was new in the past year, uh, so that that's now available online. Uh, one of the features that's really not new, but it's something not many customers I don't think are doing now, is the ability to display courses on ACEWeb that don't have active classes. And uh, I'm going to ask for a show of hands on that um, in a bit when we get to the demo, so I make sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, being able to take uh, course deposits. Um, one of the new features is a validate email tool that is really, it kind of helps prevent bot attacks, you know, automated web crawlers that fill out forms online if you've got Express Reg pages. So again, there's a couple of new features involved with that, plus a lot more. So how do you know what's new in ACEWeb? Well, just like in Manager, we have a forum for that. Um, under the ACEWare Systems forums, 
are ACE Web Forums, and there is an ACE Web Updates area. And Cheryl keeps that up to date anytime we have, and I have to go on, anytime there is a new ACE Web release. So the current release was eh, about a month ago. Cheryl, when is, uh, what would be the next release? 12, and when would that be probably posted? You know? It should be next week, probably Monday okay. or Tuesday. All right. So the current version is 3.5.011. And again, if you go to it, it'll tell you what that includes. I'm going to roll over to the website on that. And the last one, wouldn't you know? Um, let's get, I'll get my web browser up. Come on, Alt-Tab. We'll get another browser up. Oh, here it is. Well, wow, here I am. Um, so we're going to go to the ACE Web Forum. So when you're on the ACE Web Forum, and I'm going to go back to the the main site here, kind of get take us back. So hang on, I'm going to put you back, put you back where you were, back to ACE Web. Where's our ACE Web? I guess I have to just go to ACE Web. Okay or aceware.com. So under customers, aceware forums, and again, this is free as a customer. You can and should be on that. Uh, there is a student manager section, and it has student manager updates. There's also the ace web section. And again, um, you can sign up for notifications on this, but then when a, a notification, uh, an update is posted, you can open this up and be able to see, you know, what are new features, uh, invoices online. So actually, that was just that just happened in the January invoice, and then there are some updates elements, maybe some new INI settings, uh, bug fixes. So again, this is how you can keep track of what programs are going on um, in in uh, in a or what are the new features in AceWeb. So check out the forum. Um, one of the things that is coming up as far as a new feature is that the household profile on the on the user accounts where you can allow your your individual users to create another record for a family member. Uh, the old system had what was called household profiles, and you had to load a profile and add a profile and save a profile and empty a profile. Uh, Cheryl and Stein worked on that, and we're coming up with a model more like the updated Proxy Reg, so that if you are logged in now, Cheryl Scott would be logged in, that she'd be able to see all the other family members in her group and can jump to their records, and she was the one that created them, by just clicking on the little, um, uh, clicking on the, the tab next to their record. Whoa, backwards. Uh, and then if you wanted to add a new family member, uh, they just click Add New Household Profile, and that will automatically add a new record and carry the address of who you are back into that. I know we've been talking to Melody about the household profile system, so again, uh, we're thinking this should be in the sandbox next week if you'd like to come play with it. Uh, Cheryl, when would this be probably in you think it'll be in the 12 build? You go ahead and put it up. Yeah, I will be putting it up next week when I post 12. It's not as easy to give it to customers, so we'll need to make appointments if they want to. In other their words, own. they'll have to get a get a new form. There'll be a there'll be an issue of well, this will paste on the personal profile page. So yeah, so person, we'll have to do some of the that. The person page. You'll have to edit yeah. your person page. So. All right, so that's one of the new things coming up. I'm going to pause, Lori. We haven't let you have a, have a breather. Any uh, buzz or questions going on here that we can uh, we need to address or take a look at? I'm trying to get to my panel. Hang on, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, Lori, any? I'm sorry. Well, I'm trying to get to my um, get to my you, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, and get the slideshow. 
Um, and would oh, like hang. to know where they can find what version of AceWeb they're running. Okay, I that is a good question, and let me let me get Cheryl on that. Cheryl, uh, I'm going to get to a browser, and so let's talk about how you can tell your your version. What is the best way to do that? Um, can, you, can you yeah pull up the me, pull up the Ace or an Ace Web demo browser? I mean in the browser. Well, let's there we go. All right, yeah. I'm getting back Ace Web demo. Here we go. So, uh, when you are on your Ace Web page, that if you click, this should be your home, Ace Home HDM. This should be, and of course, now I'm trying to think, it would pick be the home. Pick out everything. Pick out everything after, from Ace on. Yeah, there you go. Put about. Lead so that what you do is dot about dot AWP. So you basically, by adding the word about AWP after the ACE, after WConnect. Now, is that ACE? Uh, I think you should take ACE out. OK, so it's back to WConnect. There you go. OK, about AWP. And then when you get Enter, that will give you the executable version and the date it was generated. And again, if you're if you're not sure how to do that, I'll in fact let me put in, I'll copy that and just paste that onto a slide. So, all right, good question, Lori. What else um, you got? Uh, can you show an example of a person page? Uh, of a person page. Well, that is indeed, and I wanted to get to from the current slide. The person page is basically uh, the page where you, let me get back one here, where if I log into my account, I'm logging into the Aceware demo. The person page is where the student would fill out their name and address, whether they're creating a new account or editing their old account. <clears throat> and again, if you're not sure what page you're on, um, now I'm kind of small. I didn't make my screen size bigger. Uh, but at the very top of the screen, uh, I'll get my pointer out here again, there should be, after your slash ace or whatever the, the name of your domain is, it'll say the name of the form that it's on, person AWP. So, but this is the person page that we're talking about. All right? That's all for now. All right. Now let me see if I can get us back to resume the shoe here. So, all right. Well, what I want to do now is, again, kind of go through here the idea of what else. How do you know? How do you know what else you can do with your ACE web? Well, in my opinion, the best way to do it is come look at Cheryl's Sandbox. We call it the Cheryl Sandbox. But try aceweb.com. Or if you are on, <clears throat> if you are on the system, that's still the slideshow, and still there we are. Um, if you are on the system, that um, from your main page of aceware.com, go to demos, aceweb demo, and that is a sandbox. Now. The Sandbox has lots of resources going on here. Number one, it begins to show you some of the many options you've got available in, uh, in AceWeb. Uh, and so the idea of being able to see different ways you could present your courses, um, different ways, the idea of the search mode. Uh, this is the updated pages have the cart option at the top. Um, you can add something like a schedule. And again, some of these are examples of some custom work that you might want to have done because they have to be kind of hand edited for your site. Uh, but it gives you, here's a variety um, of uh, the idea that you can have from your main ACE web page. Uh, whatever is your main ACE web page, you could put a link to courses that are upcoming in the next seven days or 14 days, 
and so try to do last minute sale for upcoming courses. Um, so again, this is the spot where uh, I would recommend if you haven't come played with this, come in, create an account, go in, register for classes, look through the different examples. Now, a couple things that I've noticed in looking at different customer sites is that a lot of them have the old search mode. And this is the, in the advanced course search. Uh, the, the open format item at the top gives you kind of a text search that a student can search for courses by a keyword in the description, in the title, in the grouping description. The advanced search mode involves a new search page, but it allows the student multiple options for being able to find courses. Uh, and again, this the advanced search page was released about two or three years ago. So again, if you don't have the advanced search page, uh, this would be one that you'd want to go to uh, your templates area and look up the advanced search page and get with your tech about getting that added into your ACE web. Back to here we go. Whoop, let's go back to the ACEWARE systems. I got too many things open. Uh, advanced search. Here we go. All right, find the right tab. So that is the advanced search mode. Um, the other thing is that I want to cover is things like suggest a course. Um, you can have an option for students to be able to recommend that here's a course I'd like to take. Um, you can do the same with instructors. You can invite instructors to fill out a course proposal. Uh, you can invite instructors to fill out a uh, application form, if you would. Uh, certainly, the instructor options to allow instructors to log on and look at their classes. That, that's a core facility of ACEWEB, and generally, I would think you'd want to make sure you've got that turned on. Um, the other area in terms of, I guess, reviewing for you is that under the ACEWEB demo, there is an example section. And the example section allows you to see, well, many of the different things you can do with ACEWEB. How to do coupon code support. What the course packaging module looks like. How you can do deposits, donations, dual fees, embedded video. Again, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this up, uh, this is an example of a class where we have embedded a video in it. And again, that is something you can do with your current student manager, ACEWEB, is to embed a video link. And again, the caveat is that you would need to have a YouTube link because this basically uses the YouTube format, but that you can put in a quick video of an instructor or students in the class doing something and use that to promote your class. Um, express registrations. This is again custom elements or options for your program where if it's particularly if you do a lot of conferences. I know Georgia Southern does tons of conferences. Auburn does tons of conferences where they have um, express registration pages. And the idea of an express registration page is that it allows you to generate a checkout form that is a one page, one and done. And again, there are places where you use this, places where you wouldn't. But typically in the case where you have like a one-off event that you're not likely to have a student enrolling in multiple programs uh, and we're not worrying necessarily about passwords, uh, this this example does show a password. Cheryl, I think that can be optional, right? You don't ha you can leave a password off an Express Reg page. You certainly can. If you if you want, that makes it difficult yes. for them to log back in. Uh, but basically, an alternate way to be able to let your students sign up for for programs, um, inventory items, the marketing campaign option. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Membership requirements, book orders, invoicing paying balances online, prerequisites, proxy reg, um, which incidentally we're, we're going to be working on 
the idea that if you're enrolling other people in the program, um, how to try to make that easier for you, but the whole issue of inviting your participants to enroll other people uh, in the program. Uh, other examples, BOGO, um, we'll cover that again. The suggest supplemental data, waitlisting, who else is attending. This is one, if you're doing conferences or um, annual events where you have kind of a lot of the same people coming back every year, one of the options on this is to be able to invite the students to say, show my name as attending the program. And then you could put a link up there and say, here are the people who are in t attending this program. And again, it's kind of a way to tell you, hey, is my buddy Fred coming to the conference this year? Uh, so again, examples of the kind of things that you're doing. Um, trying to think. I wanted to go to my account and talk about um, this is um, back to, again, somebody asked about the person page. This is my person page now. Uh, you'll note. In our demo, we don't have a lot of detail here on the page. For, uh, for those of you out there running live AceWeb, of course, you control what it is is on this page. So again, if you want more detail about the individual, birthday, gender, uh, you can choose to put that on. That is entirely up to you. You also can choose what it is that you want to have required or not. Uh, that's independent from however you might have your student manager set up. Um, being able to look at a registration history. I wanted to, someone asked about paying invoices. Uh, the new registration history has the ability for you to be able to say payment status where you can go in and this would be if you have a balance due, I can pay the entire balance off. Uh, and that's been there for quite a while. But the new thing is, is that it allows you now to be able to say only present or only let the student, no, let me say, allow the student to be able to just pay off specific invoices. And again, if you're doing um, monthly billing where you do a payment plan for a student um, and you're using company invoicing, uh, this is a way they can go in and just pay uh, the invoice that's due that particular month. And so typically, you would only have uh, one invoice at a time due. They'd pay the current one that's due in February, and the uh, March one, you typically wouldn't probably include it because you wouldn't run invoices for March until it's a little closer. So it wouldn't show up until you've run the invoice routine and had it show up on the student record. I am going to pause here and see if there are any questions, Lori, on over stuff we're going through so far. Actually, that was the one question that I was holding. If you okay, said I so we, we got people that. people pay for it online? Yes, and that is, of course, where we are with that. I'm trying to think with the other one, Cheryl, I'm trying uh, uh, on uh, my profile that we might want to review. Uh, down back to proxy candidates. Uh, and again, these are people whom you are either family member connections or that you have registered them before, and so it keeps their history in there. And this is a way you can actually allow people to turn this off. Uh, credentials, this is that new option for credentials that if you're using the credential tool, you can allow students to put in their real estate license or any other uh, license they might have available. All right, well, I, let me roll back to the slideshow and kind of, again, we, we've talked about the, uh, the sandbox now. I use that as an example. And then the other way to learn about AceWeb is check out your colleagues. Do some good old-fashioned continuing at R&R. &R. Uh, and again, I would, I would ask, uh, you know, everybody knows what continuing at R&R &R is, right? It's, it's rip off and replicate. So. We, we love, and, and, that, and we do that all the time. And that's, that's, you know, what works for other people. Let's try it for our customers as well. All right. Now we want to talk about some premium services that we've got going on. Number one is the AceWeb makeover, and then the other is the fitness. Now, we now have these uh, listed on the web under AceWeb information. 
Uh, they used to be on the pricing section of the system. What basically the Extreme Makeover is allows you to change your ACE web look. So it, well, you can do that right now, but what it is, we will provide, we'll do the work for you. Lindsay is now our makeover queen, and basically you tell her what website you have that you want to model, and she'll make your ACE web just mirror that. And that will allow your students, as they're navigating through your home page and going to check out, they're going to feel real comfortable because they're going to feel like they're right in the same website. The other one is AceWeb Fitness, which is a bit more of kind of an operations review of your AceWeb, uh, where we'll have Lindsay work with you to look at your AceWeb settings, basically kind of do a a rethink of how you're using AceWeb at your site, uh, so that involves some consulting, as well as review of adding in some of these new features that we might have available that you don't have a content person or a web person who's got the skill to do that. Um, so again, now those are the two. I'm going to get to the oh, oh where where uh, let me let me go back and reference now if I get to the. Here we go. Uh, online registration, ASWIP, to find my right page again. Online reference guide. Um, I want to go to ASWIP home here. Okay. Um, so under products, ASWIP, and I want to take you here. The ASWIP special services, we've got a PDF that explains what they are. Uh, the makeover design, again, that's a $500 server service takes about oh it takes only three or four hours of work but you're just scheduling it with Lindsay to a time when she can uh, work with you and then the fitness consultation which again is that we'll have Lindsay work with you page by page and kind of go through the templates make sure that you have things turned on the way you want uh, she can work with you a bit on the aceweb INI settings to make sure those are set up and again, look at how your website is organized and maybe offer some suggestions between you and your other web manager how you might better implement AceWeb uh, in your particular site. So what is the makeover? This is the one that's probably the simplest and, and, the, and, and, and I think has one of the best impacts, is how well is your AceWeb integrated with your main CE website? So. Um, again, you can modify the design. There is a help guide, and I want, want to get to that. I want to make sure. Oh, and I ran by it. I have, I have to learn how to deal with the tab business. There's the tab business. So we're going to go to the online reference guide. Um, under the customizing AceWeb, you've got the idea of HTML templates. So again, there is a series of elements in here that allows you to identify how you might do your customizing. Uh, there is help in the, in the help guide on that. Um, but basically what we're talking about is the difference between the standard AceWeb default. And this is what the standard default is. You can put your logo, put in your name here, pick a color. But with a makeover, or if you've got your own person doing that, you can change this to a site that really looks like the primary site that you have on campus. This is an ACE website. And if I can get back to my browser, I should have online. Oh, this is the main site. This is the ACE website. And let me get to the bookmark for, OK, that's the ACE website. This is the main, the main IPFW site. So when a student says, I want to see the non-credit courses, watch the screen, it looks pretty much the same. So the idea is that's what we're talking about, applying the design from your campus website to the ACE web pages. Uh, so uh, there's the IPFW. This is the tech transfer in Berkeley. Um, this is Brooklyn Botanical Garden. Again, colors, look, fonts, 
um, again, those that's the kind of thing that you can you can get with the uh, the Ace Web Makeover. Um, all right, so moving on to the other part, which are optional modules for Ace Web. And again, uh, these are the three uh, on Ace Web Calendar Display Course Packaging Bogo, which of course actually also works for your student manager, so you actually get double duty out of that. And then the alternate interface. Um, we, of course, many of you know that we have built or can build Express Reg pages, custom pages for special conferences. Uh, we have integrated with third-party membership databases. Um, if you've got some particular unique needs, uh, shoot your, net, your tech a note, explain what you're after, and they'll get with Stein or Matthew or I or Sharon, and we'll, we'll work up a quote as to what this uh, might involve if you needed some custom work. So what are the optional modules here? Calendar view is the way to uh, display your classes that are upcoming in a calendar view. And uh, the other benefit of the calendar module is that you actually have a alternate view of this that is a staff view. The student calendar view only shows the starting date of a class. The, um, the uh, staff view actually gives you the option to be able to show every session of a class. So you actually can get an online, if you would, schedule of every class session. If you have a lot of programs, you can have a fairly busy page. And you can have it display a color, green for the start date, I forget, red for the end date, and I forget, what's the one for a, a one and done? There's a different color for a one-time class. But it allows you as staff to be able to see some special views of what's going on. Um, course packaging, uh, this is a course bundling option where you can bundle multiple classes and be able to say, if you buy this package, you get all three of these classes in one registration, and you're going to get a discount. And so the idea, if you've got similar courses that you'd like to bundle together, a la Walmart, a la, or a la Costco, or Sam's Club, um, you can do that with the course packaging tool. And then with that is BOGO, special course pricing, where you buy one, or you buy X number of courses, and you get the next one free, or the next one half off. And again, the neat thing about BOGO is that you determine how many classes that have to be taken uh, to get the offer, and you determine the amount of the offer for the next plus one. So it could be free. It could be a discount of so much percent off. So it doesn't have to be buy one, get one. It could be buy four, get the fifth one half off. So you can be as um, expansive or as tight as you want on that. And again, this is uh, course packaging includes BOGO. So this is actually, uh, you get a two for here. You get two of these for $14.95. And then finally, alternate interfaces. Um, I know we've got some of you out there who do have alternate interfaces. With AceWeb, and I'm going to jump to um, the demo on that, get to, get to AceWeb. Get to aceware.com. Those are the web pages. Hang on. Let me just get to aceweb. Here we go. <clears throat> what the alternate interface does, well, I guess I do it right from here. What the alternate interface allows you to do is have a different brand, a different storefront for your student manager database. Uh, it actually also offers the ability to run two different databases off of one ACE web and one additional alternate interface. So it's got multiple options. It's basically $3,500 per, per interface. But the, but the option for you on that is that if you want to brand a website differently for one group of programs than a different group of programs, you're able to do that. So. Um, from the AceWeb demo site, this is what the AceWeb demo web page looks like. We'll close that, and we get back to. Didn't mean to get off of that. Back to AceWeb. 
demo. Okay, back to alternate interfaces. So the default design, again, this is the same AceWeb, three different or two different designs so far, and then the conference website, where we model, of course, the design of our AceWeb homepage. Those all three, one AceWeb, three different web looks. Um, and the other thing I would say about this is that you also have the ability to determine the default student capture page. And that's one of the main reasons for using, or one of the other reasons for using a alternate interface is that if you've got a group like maybe Kids Camp, where on a Kids Camp you're going to want to ask a whole lot more information on Kids Camp about uh, when you go to create an account. So if we're on, I'm going to get back, I should be logged in to my profile here. So that on a kids camp, you might have, you want to know parents' name and you want to know the grade in school and you want to know if you're allergic to peanuts or whatever. That's not the stuff. Parents' name and emergency contact number, probably not so much for your people taking you know, accounting for the non-accounting professional or project management. So that's where the alternate, pro, alternate interface is particularly useful. All right, Cheryl, any comments or thoughts on that? Again, Cheryl or Lori or questions from the group so far? Well, I do have one that might come up now. If you have an alternate in interface, how does that impact the calendar? Uh, uh, Cheryl, tell me on that. I think you have to install the calendar for that second interface separately, right? Yes, you would just install it into your internet, into your alternate interface as well. And I believe we have allowed people to use one calendar for for two different alternate interfaces. We've not forced them to buy a separate one. So maybe we should. We 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 just haven't done that so far. So yeah, you would have a private calendar for the second the second interface. Okay. Anything else, Tony, Lori? T Tony would like to know on the Ace Web calendar, can it be customized to only show courses with a particular grouping code, catalog code, or interest code? Uh, Cheryl, grouping code, yes. Catalog code and interest code, I don't think so, but tell me. No, just grouping code. Yeah, I think you can it's do grouping. grouping code. Yeah, grouping code and location um, are the two big ones you can do, but not not the other fields. Yeah, so that when you are at the calendar display, um, now these are the kind of things you could do it by building, uh, you could do it by instructor, um, you could put grouping code. Now again, there are you, this select option. Are there any others in here? You said grouping code. We've got building, uh, instructor, location, a keyword. So if you said I just wanted um, a student manager, it would just show. Well, we may not have any of them going on here. May not have that terminology on there. Um, Cheryl, any other things that you could actually put in the search by? No, just those. Uh, pretty much those. OK. Uh, any other yeah. questions, Lori? Not at the moment. All right, let's kind of, we're, we're getting, what can you do to start? I think right now we, 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 we talked about the three minutes of homework. Lori, tell people what we'd like them to do right Oh, come on. There it is, right your, now. Your timer is your timer's timers, we're eating up. Uh, it's, now. it's going now. We've got three minutes. We'd like people to go out and look at their FAQ page. Just scan it top to bottom, because a lot of folks have not looked at their FAQ page in a long time, and there's stuff out there that's just not right. OK, so like and, and so what we're talking about, on your AceWeb, there should be, or there is the option to put an FAQ page. And the point is, is that there are some programs uh, that have used the old AceWeb FAQ and have never edited for their own use. So let's kind of make sure. Go to your site where your AceWeb is running, look at your FAQ page, and then read through that. Uh, and of course, our demo has uh, information about FAQ, but kind of go read through that. Do you have the right contact person? Is the person's email that you said to call about AceWeb questions even still working for you? 
retirements, uh, you know, folks moving on. Uh, make sure that's that's something again that just is part of again your your maintaining that site to make sure it's up to date uh, so that your students have the best experience possible uh, as they register for your classes. So, all right, so we're we're cranking along. I'm Chuck going. To, and this is going to be hard for you, Chuck, not to do anything for three oh, minutes. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I'm gonna go get a. I'm gonna get a glass of water. I can tell I got way too much time on my hands here. So, <laughs> while we're waiting, again, if you if are if you're a quick read and have already got that, feel free to shoot some questions to Lori, and uh, we'll try to address questions while um, everybody is going through their FAQ page read. I promise not to name names, but I would like you to share comments when you come back to the webinar itself from your FAQ page and let us know what you found. Okay, is yeah. Is your refund yeah. policy right? Is your cancellation policy out there, or does it still say, put your cancellation policy here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those, fill in the blank, and it's, it, it, it says, fill in the blank here. Yeah, that does seem like a long time, Lori, so. It does, but it, it, it's Cheryl, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. I wanted to try to cover the I and I settings, uh, Lori, and I may. Oh, we actually have oh. a whole webinar out there for that. Cheryl did that. There is a webinar. Ago. I forgot yeah, about really the I and I. Job. I missed yeah. that one. I missed that one. That's why I wasn't. That's, yeah, you were. Remind me. Rocking, remind me I to. Guess. Yeah. Well, I was. I think I might have been traveling or coming back from coming back from a trip. Goodness, that's a long three minutes. Oh, Robin long said time. she had somebody leave and needed to change the position of the there phone number. There you go. So she there had to go. go in and fix that. So, and I promised not to give anybody out. And then I said, Well, but she, I she volunteered. <laughs> well, she volunteered. Robin's a good scout, so I think she'd take one for the cause. Kind of, kind of, kind of like at <laughs> at the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And my name is Robin, and I have an old FAQ. You know, so there you go, Robin. So. All right. Y'all coming back and telling me their cancellation policy wasn't complete. So. Okay. Well, good. And and again, that's the kind of thing that uh, that we want to make sure that you're updating that and taking advantage of making sure we're giving information out there for students that is accurate. So. Okay. So in about 20 seconds, we're going to go back to the webinar and we're going to start, uh, you know, giving out information again. So if you're still reading your FAQ page, you might want to just let that sit and come on back so you don't miss anything. All right. Very good. Time up. Um, all right. Well, that, that was a little exercise. Uh, the other thing you can do, and again, we talk about best practices here, uh, add graphics to your course groupings page. Now, again, on the ACEWeb demo, uh, we have examples of that so that when you have your program group listings, you can actually have an image and you can have a little description on that. And where you do that is that you go to the course grouping codes in Student Manager. And you'll note when you're looking at grouping code editing, you can put in a file name for an image, and you can put in a little bit of a description. Uh, now, there's a note about in the help guide about where you put that file name on your ACE web pages, on your ACE web server. And that the big deal is that we recommend that you have somebody who is a graphics editor take the images you've got for each of the groups and size them so that they are similar, similarly sized. Uh, you don't want a huge, uh, you know, thousand by a thousand pixel one next to one that's 150 by 175. So again, but that is how you can do graphics to groupings. The other thing is add video or graphics to your course descriptions. And again, we talked about that earlier, about uh, examples of using the built-in HTML editor now that is available in your catalog builder. And again, how many people, this is I wanted to get a show of hands, how many people, uh, Lori, can you get everybody to drop their hand down here? I'm off of the, 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 uh, the tool set. Uh, raise your hand if you have used the graphics editor, the HTML editor inside a student manager. So 
raise your hand. I guess I'm not, I can't see attendees, Lori, so you'll have to tell me how many people are doing that. Oh, quite a few. Good, good. Uh, and again, that, that I think will, and again, the, the idea about being able to do uh, headings on here where you've got, uh, um, uh, or, or lists, that's a big one. You say, here are the things you can do in this course. Well, use the list option. Use the list option over here, and you can do a bulleted list uh, about the special features uh, that you've got in a particular course. All right. Well, guys, we've come to kind of the end of the story. I want to you know, open up more questions. And again, the Aladdin's lamp or wish list that you might like to see in AceWeb. And while we're doing that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and go back to the help guide and talk about uh, where you can get the uh, info on AceWeb I and I settings. Um, so again, it is under the help guide under customizing AceWeb I and I settings. And as um, I was reminded by uh, Lori here, in the student manager section under webinars, there is an I and I under webinar archive that Cheryl just did. That is. Uh, where is it? It'd be under modules. I and I, an I on I and I settings. So there is a a webinar on the idea of what you need to know or how you might work with your I and I settings inside AceWeb. AceWeb. All right. Other questions? We're boy cutting it close on time. I should have given more time for questions. What do we, anything that hasn't been covered yet that we're running into? Um, let's see. Is there a webinar on how to use the supplemental data capture? I don't that think might not so. Be a bad idea. I, not, I don't think so. That's one. Uh, I think Cheryl, how's the help guide on that? There'd be some. I think there's stuff in help on that. Yes, there is. Okay. There's so whole uh, page of it stuff. So. Okay. So uh, there is a pretty good, a pretty good review under help. Uh, on the AceWeb I and I settings. So if you go to again, uh, AceWeb implementing AceWeb, um, running AceWeb running modes. I'm trying to think that might be customizing AceWeb, AceWeb options. Yeah, and, and supplemental data capture. Next supplemental year. data capture. So if you search supplemental data capture, you'll get that. All right. Can you show people where to find the HTML editor again, please? OK. And then again, this is in your student manager. So um, when, you are, when you are working on, a, working on a catalog description, catalog codes, you're at the catalog description field. Um, if you had, and I'm just going to clear this out, generally you're, you put in description in the primary description. Here's what the course is going to cover. Well, if you click Generate HTML, if you see the button right over here to the right, it'll bring up the HTML editor. So again, you'd hit Edit Text, and now you can go in and say Stephen R. Covey, and we're going to italicize that. So there it is, italicized. So that is where you want to color this thing. You can actually go in, find a color. I want to make that blue. You can modify, edit that um, however you want on that. So hit the Done button, apply it back, and it'll generate the HTML code and put it in your uh, description. So that is where that comes from. Uh, Tim has a wish list item for us. And all right. So, and, and all of the lowering of hands, the button to lower everybody's hand is not working. So um, we may have to get people to respond in the chat. Um, he would like to be able to send instructors the course detail page before it actually goes to the web and it's open for students so that the instructor can approve it and say, yes, all the details are absolutely right. Uh, yeah, Something basically a pre-approval uh, pre uh, uh, process. Yes. Well, we, we did have a report in the course details that would list all that, but they could have printed or made a PDF and emailed it. Right. And what I think we're ta what Cheryl's talking about here is the idea that under the under the course screen, and I, this is available as a quick report, 
uh, class description is that there is basically a report that would show everything there is to know about the course. Uh, the begin date, end date, time, uh, fees, how much instructors to be paid, course description, meeting dates, times, and again, it can be, you'd have to generate it as a PDF and then email it to the instructor, but uh, yeah, that would be, uh, I, I guess what you're generally saying is the idea of just a pre-approval for that. Um, and, and you might... Online behind the instructor login. Uh, okay, now, yeah, that is something that would have to, okay, Cheryl, so that does roll into the ACE website. So what you're saying is that if you were, if you were logged in, if I'm in it, the instructor ACE web options, I'll have to get to the demo, that if you go into instructor login, kind of like a course rosters, that there would be somewhere in here about approve, approve your course before it uh, gets published. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, right now, of course, you know we we don't have that. So, all right, uh, Cheryl, I put that on the put that on the the wish list there. We can we can talk about how we'd spec that out. So. Any other questions? Um, while we're kind of waiting for questions. Do want to remind people, only less than two months away, the annual conference, Myrtle Beach. Remember, everybody with the paid-up support agreement gets some kind of scholarship. The other thing is, next webinar, March 12th, turning your manager into a magical marketing machine. Um, the whole marketing piece, it's time to promote the spring, summer programs, and so we want to cover that one more time. Questions, how are we doing? We're running a couple minutes over, but we did a lot of ground today. We're going to ask one more question, and, and then we're going to call it a day, I believe. <laughs> um, Tony would like to know if we offer any kind of search engine optimization features in AceWeb. Yeah. Like the and courses to appear in Google's. Yeah, and that's something that's beyond my pay grade on that. And Cheryl, I don't, again, in, in terms of the whole SEO piece is, um, you know, that the, your ACE web would be part of it, but there are a whole bunch of other elements as part of that. I, I, Cheryl, do you have any? I, I don't on that The whole one. SEO item on that. That would be, that would be something we might... Uh, that might be something, Tony, that would be worth a um, an AceWeb listserv post, uh, where um, and I might have you. Uh, we'd work with you to draft something to go to the listserv, uh, asking if anybody has done any tweaking or working or pumping of AceWeb that would uh, they thought helped the SEO. Uh, that that's 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 a hard nut to determine. You know, what did you do that? That rank that that kicked you up. I mean, you can tell your rating, but what you did to get there is is sometimes hard to hard to discern. So, but yeah, that's the holy grail is to get get number one and get on the first page of your of your SEO search. So, so but no, I I don't think we have anything integrated that I can point to you right now. We are late leaving, so we're going to call it a day. Very good, folks. Thank you much. We'll have this recorded. It'll be posted and. Um, Again, if you've got other wish list items, Tony, that was a couple good ones there, uh, send those off in the email. Tell us what you thought, and uh, we hope to see you at conference and at the webinar next month. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.